Our Coffee, Cake, and Camo podcast would not be possible without the support of our incredible sponsors. Thank you to Food Lion and Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation for being a force behind the forces. This weekend is also Father's Day weekend, so we're giving a special Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there, especially those that are currently serving or have served. Happy Father's Day. Hi, everybody. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Erica. And welcome to Coffee, Cake, and Camo. Coffee, Cake, and Camo is a weekly podcast brought to you by the USO of Hampton Roads in Central Virginia. And each week we plan to explore a military topic from the haircut challenge you've seen on social media to PCSing and everything in between. But before we get started, we want to take a second to thank some USO HRCV sponsors. Because without their support, we could not bring you this podcast or work to fulfill the USO mission. So special thank you to Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation and Food Line. Thank you so much for supporting your local USO and uh, your local military community. And in case any of our listeners are new to the USO, the mission of the USO is to strengthen America's military service members by keeping them connected to family, home, and country throughout their service to the nation. Now, we usually start the show off with sharing some personal good news, but honestly, we're going to forego talking about that because this is probably the best news of the week. All of Virginia has moved into phase two of reopening the state. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. This is the good news that we all need to be focusing on. Now, I don't know too much about phase two, Chelsea, but do you know any of the specifics that go into that? Yeah, so I I do actually. I did a little research on it, uh, mostly because I've been desperate for some of my favorite places to open up, specifically Mm -hmm. my gym. So I'm fully celebrating right now. You know, I've gone every day since they opened back up. Um, So under phase two, it's probably easier for me to just tell you what's not allowed to reopen yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, remaining closed are indoor sporting event venues, indoor concert venues, and movie theaters. Oh, that makes sense, Um, especially since gatherings are currently capped to just 50 people. Like all of the sporting events and concerts definitely are above 50 people. So that makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. And outdoor versions of those events are allowed, uh, but they, again, have to remain at 50 people or less, which is great news for our outdoor adventure team. They can start doing their outdoor activities again. So, um, oh, also, though, I hope you aren't planning on going to any amusement parks, bowling alleys, arcades. (laughs) fairs, carnivals, escape rooms, or trampoline parks because they will all remain closed during phase two as well. Honestly, it's going to be a pretty slow summer because you know this, Chelsea. I'm definitely like an amusement park girl. I'm a water park girl. I'm a carnival girl. I'm all those things. But as long as we have the beaches, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> You'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I personally do not like any of those things because I'm a germaphobe. <laughs> uh, I'm, I think water that a lot of people are in kind of grosses me out. But we do have the beaches. You are correct. So as long as you're practicing social distancing, which I'm personally so sick of saying those words, but we still have to, of course. Um, also, restaurants and non-essential businesses can still operate at 50% capacity. And uh, for all our listeners with children, the Virginia Aquarium and the Marine Science Center open today and the Virginia Zoo is scheduled to open on June 25th so be sure to check their website uh, for more info regarding admission and occupancy capacities and all that fun stuff. Oh sweet so it'll definitely give uh, you know those families with children definitely give them something really fun and also informational to do in the summertime so we've definitely came a long way since April for sure. We definitely have. Uh, Life isn't completely back to normal, but, you know, we're slowly making progress and I think we're all pretty thrilled like you can kind of feel it in the air when you're out now it's kind of cool. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, does Virginia Phase 2 guidelines apply to all of our listeners? Actually, it does not. So from what I've seen on Facebook, our service members are still operating under the DOD or their basis guidelines. So bear with me because this is a lot, but we want everybody to have the info. So currently, sailors stationed on Joint Base Little Creek Fort Story, Naval Air Station Oceana Dam Neck Annex, and Naval Station Norfolk are still only permitted to travel to and from work and to other essential activities like the grocery store. And that's according to their official uh, base Facebook pages. Uh, Our joint staff at Joint Base Langley Eustis are still operating under HEPCON C, and that's the health protection condition, Charlie, and are in a mission critical status, according to their Facebook page. Also, joint staff at Langley Eustis have a stop movement order in place, which means their travel is limited to the local area only. And finally, to round things out, Fort Lee has some good news for their soldiers. Their ALU fitness facilities and the ordnance fitness facilities are now open to active duty and first responders. Wow. Honestly, that is a lot of information, (laughs) but it's important information for our listeners. Oh, yeah, it definitely is. And we just wanted to make sure that our service members were aware that they may still have restrictions that they need to follow, even though the state's loosening up. So, you know, all of us civilians have a little more leeway. But service members, you know, they sacrifice so much. I think they're used to it. Uh, You know, this is no exception. Oh, totally. 
But now that I know all this, and more specifically that restaurants are opening up with the 50% capacity, Chelsea and I need to grab lunch. I'm thinking a little bit of kava action. You read my some- mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean- so we know the where. Now you just tell me the when, and I'll make it happen, Erica. Let's do it. Now, before we wrap this segment up, where can service members find more information or to check updated information? Yeah, so we've been tracking all of this uh, via the the base Facebook pages, which is a kind of a good place to start. Facebook, at least in my experience, tends to be the most up to date and accurate, even sometimes more than the official websites. But of course, if any service members have any question, we definitely encourage them to reach out to your chain of command for absolute certainty. Absolutely. Thanks, Chelsea. Yeah. Now, on uh, Coffee, Cake, and Camo, we're also looking into home delivery and meal prep services. And joining us now from Fort Lee, we have Kasinda and Andre. And from Naval Station Norfolk, we have Janelle and Patrick. Hi, guys. Welcome. We're happy to have you. Hello. Thanks for having us. We're happy to be here. Yeah, as Chelsea said, we're really happy to see you guys, um, especially since we haven't been seeing many faces lately. But we have seen a bunch of commercials and ads for meal subscriptions, but these two awesome couples are going to break down some of those uh, who aren't too familiar with them, like me. Yeah, so Cassandra and Andre, let's start with you. Can you tell us what service you and your family use, and what's the one thing that you like the most about it? Well, we use Dream Dinners um, because it's convenient, and it helps us budget our money more. Um, what dream um, to your viewers right now? What Dream Dinners is is it's a service where you actually go to the to the um, Dream Dinners itself, and they have like stations set up, like maybe like five or six stations, kind of like um, think of it as like a subway. And each month they have a menu, and you go there, you pick your menu um, before you go, and then you actually go on the day that you're scheduled to go, and you make your meals. But once you make your meals, you take them home and you you know put them in the freezer, and once you're ready you know, to make those meals, then you, you know, pull them out at your convenience and you make those meals. Um, So that's basically what we like about it is the convenience. That's really cool, actually. I've never heard of anything like that. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, it's really good. And it's so easy to make. Anyone can do it. Well, let's hear about another one. So Janelle and Patrick, what about you guys? What, What service do you and your family use? And what's the one thing that you like most about it? So we use HelloFresh. And why do we like it? Uh, well, because we can confidently say uh, before we use a service, uh, when it comes to deciding what we want to eat for dinner, uh, we like to play this fun little game that uh, uh, we like to spend three or four hours arguing of where to eat and what to get. So to help alleviate uh, those things and help save our hunger and our marriage, uh, <laughs> we went with this hello service and alleviate those arguments in the middle of the night for what we're going to eat. That is smart. That's a good way to go. And it's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Now, let's say that I was interested in subscribing to a service. So which one would you say would give me more bang for my buck? Well, with Dream Dinners, there is no subscription. You just sign up um, ahead of time, decide what meals that you want to prepare, and then you just go in and prepare them. And it's very cost saving. You can get a medium or a large depending on your family size. And the menu changes every month, so you get a good variety, and you can select the same meals or multiple different meals. You can mix mix and match. Um, First of all, HelloFresh is way cheaper than us ordering out all the time. Um, Second of all, they only send you the, like, supplies that you need. So you don't have, like, a bunch of waste. You don't have a bunch of extras. Our kids eat something completely different. So um, it just, it's a good meal for like a a good adult meal for both of us to eat. (laughs) Okay. Well, that sounds great. But the real question is, how does the food actually taste? Is it actually good? That's a good one, Chelsea. (laughs) It's important. The food food is really good. It it is really good. Um, So it's a large variety on the menu and it's just. It, it tastes it good. Tastes it, comes, good. <laughs> it tastes, it good, tastes it good. good. It tastes I'm good. I'm not going to go into it. You have to taste it for yourself. <laughs> and I would say whether if you're a uh, skilled chef or someone who's just trying to survive and eat, uh, the meals are very simple and uh, they come out just looking like the picture as long as you follow the instructions. Yeah, they taste really good too, no matter. Like, doesn't matter if you follow the instructions like some people or you just kind of wing it, think that you know what you're doing like others. typical guy stuff i'm telling you yeah (laughs) well we really like uh potlucks at the uso so maybe one day you guys can probably like switch meals and then uh let us know what you guys think and i don't know maybe you'll look into the other subscription service (laughs) you're a genius erica i try (laughs) 
maybe we'll pull out a dream dinner and you can sample it and see how you like it. And Chelsea, I'll have to make an extra special vegetarian one for you. Mm -hmm. I like the yeah. sound of that. I like it. <laughs> I keep all of my HelloFresh cards. Like I probably have like a stack like this of them. So definitely doable. So, well, I'm like really it. excited to try it out. Yeah. <laughs> now I know with the both subscriptions, you do still have to do some preparation. You know, it's not a hot meal at your door every single night, which would be nice, but there's a little bit of elbow grease in each meal service. And I really like the concept, though, that someone else does all the shopping, the grocery shopping for us, um, especially since with, you know, uh, the phase two. Yes, we're in phase two, but we still have to be really careful when it comes to grocery shopping and keeping our distance and stuff. So that's actually really cool that both services kind of do that uh, shopping for you. Yeah, both of those sound like a bonus to me. I mean, getting groceries delivered saves me from buying unnecessary items. We talked in a past episode about that, how I've been saving money now that I'm not going into grocery stores as often. So uh, do either uh, couple find it financially beneficial? And if so, do you see it right away? Or is this more of like an in the long run type of thing? I find it very financially beneficial because of the way that Dream Dinners is set up. It keeps you from eating all the processed foods that you mm -hmm. find in the middle of the grocery store aisle and allows you to shop the perimeter. So when we're in a busy season of kids going to school, people going to work, um, all we have to really worry about are breakfast and lunch. Dinner is taken care of. So that's one less stress and worry that we have to worry about. So it does save us a lot of time and money. And for us in comparison to ordering fast food, it's so much cheaper. So much cheaper, <laughs> it's so much healthier makes our life that much easier like that fresh food is being delivered to our our door every week yeah that sounds ideal honestly mm -hmm. so what is it that made you guys decide that this was a good thing for your families both of you for me um a friend of mine introduced it to us when we were living in texas and it was the most convenient thing at the time where you didn't have the guesswork of what are we going to eat for dinner tonight? What's for dinner tonight? What do we have in the pantry? This way with dream dinners, you have the meal already prepared and you just go in, thaw it out and cook it. And it's done. It's fresh. It's healthy. And it's on the table in under 30 minutes. And it's good. <laughs> That's the most important part. Yeah. <laughs> And, and how did we get started with HelloFresh? Uh, we started when we first moved into our home. We purchased, and then uh, we had uh, security system people come on out, and we're telling them about how much of a pain, you know, we have to go find recipes we want to make, make sure we get the right ingredients, buying in bulk, going to places. And that's when he started a conversation and gave a highly recommendation for HelloFresh. Yeah, I was a full-time college student and a full-time mom at the time, and he's active duty, so our lives were super crazy, because like I said, we have a four and a two-year-old, so some nights it's just a struggle to get something on the table, so being like, okay, I know what we're eating tonight just is one less thing that you have to worry about. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And Janelle and Patrick, there are a few celebrities, I've definitely seen this, but there are a few celebrities that endorse HelloFresh, and they make it look so easy. It sounds pretty easy from what I'm hearing, but just tell us the truth about the process. Is it really that easy? I would say so. Uh, when you get your ingredients card, there's only about like six steps on average what you see on how to make your dinner. And it normally comes out uh, the way it looks in the picture. So whether if you want to be very detailed and read the instructions carefully, like some people, or if you just flip notes like myself, the dinner will turn out just fine. And I'm sure you're part of the whole. Yeah, somebody, you, if you want, you could read the instructions. If not, you can just look at pictures and hope that at the end <laughs> it's made the way you think it's going to be. <laughs> All right, so we're getting the vibe that Patrick does not read directions. Janelle does. What about you, Cassinda and Andre? I'm definitely a direction reader in all things that I do. They're there for a reason. <laughs> Sometimes I may skip a step. <laughs> it still comes out great. It still comes out great. <laughs> and that's all there's a trend to you. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, as long as it turns out good and you can eat it and at the end of the night you feel full, that's, I mean, that's all that matters, I guess. <laughs> now, last week, Chelsea and I mentioned some quarantine fails. We saw some recipes of people baking and, and let's just say it didn't, I don't know if it turned out good, but it definitely didn't turn out looking great. <laughs> so, 
we just want to let our listeners know, were there any cooking fails, um, you know, from both couples when you first tried out your meal subscription? Uh, was there a certain recipe that was kind of difficult to follow or were you just kind of lost when you first made your recipes? We've had different types of fails. I have fails where I just burn the food. <laughs> like the broiler for me is like, I can never time it right. So like sometimes like I put quesadillas in and they come out and they're like, hardly broiled at all and other times like I pull them out and I'm like oh my gosh Patrick open the door the house is filling <laughs> with smoke <laughs> for myself uh, back to those reasons instructions uh it'll ask for if you're making mashed potatoes to get a cup and a half of water um if you read it carefully it'll tell you slowly add the water until you get to the consistency you want um, I just add the cup and a half of water, and then I ask her, why is this mashed potatoes looking like potato soup? So it goes back to like, kind of make sure you're reading the details. I mean, they still tasted okay. They were just very soupy. Mm-hmm. It could have just been potato soup. You could have just said <laughs> that. <laughs> what about you, Cassinda and Andre? Well, I've had the same kind of issue with the mashed potatoes and the rice. I always leave like the mashed potatoes or the rice for Cassinda, but I'll cook the rest. <laughs> And just let her finish when she comes home. Yeah, I'm rice good. is tricky. Rice, you have to be very exact in a lot of cases. Unless it's just plain white rice, like, you need to know your measurements, the time, the temperature. Yeah, it's tough. I feel you, Andre. It happens. <laughs> it happens. But when you read the directions, it happens a little less. You're right about that. You're right about that. Ladies know it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Well, you guys, this has been so much fun chatting with you all about your meal subscriptions. I may need to do a little bit more research before I get one myself. But in the meantime, I'm up for trying any of yours. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) I mean, like I said, you know, we love potlucks here. Just don't tell us that there were meal subscriptions and then maybe we won't tell the difference. Well, again, thank you so much, Janelle, Patrick, Kassin, and Andre. You know, we're sure you guys have super busy schedules, but we really are happy that you guys were able to stop by and talk to us about your meal subscriptions. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye thanks. thanks. <laughs> All right. And if any of our listeners have a meal service subscription story that you'd like to share with us, use the hashtag Coffee Cake Camo. We'd love to hear how well it works for you or, or if it didn't work out at all. But that's all the time that we have today for our coffee cake and camo. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for the handle at USOHRCB. And if there's a topic that you want us to talk about or share with us, just use the hashtag Coffee Cake Camo. And one more final amazing thank you to our sponsors, Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation and Food Lion. And I'm Chelsea. And I'm Erica. Stay connected and classy HRCV.